There is a legitimate concern that R.J. Barrett has a serious left knee injury that the New York Knicks are not disclosing to the public, and that is a huge problem considering he has been the best Knicks player throughout this season. So what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. My name is Chris, and we're going to jump right into things. As always, R.J. Barrett may have a more serious knee injury than meets the eye, as New York Knicks analysts believe that this may not be a sore knee like what the Knicks are calling it. Now, that is a huge problem, as I said, because RJ has been the best player on the Knicks this season. He has been the only one who's been consistent. But something on top of that is that he, that means he has been the best player on the Knicks with an injured knee this far. Obviously, he did not play in the last game against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And tonight, on Friday, November 3rd, he is listed as questionable. That has been since yesterday on Thursday. This video will be going out before the Knicks game on Friday, so I don't know if he's going to play it has not come out as of the time that I am filming this video. So it's really concerning right now because RJ missing his second straight game due to knee soreness is never a good sign, especially when some analysts believe that this is not just a sore knee. This is what Alan Hahn had to say. When it happened, I immediately was concerned because it was eerily similar to when KP blew out his knee, dunking as Giannis chased him from behind. That's absolutely correct. It was very similar. The difference is Porzingis fell during that dunk where RJ caught himself. Now, sometimes you don't want to catch yourself because it's going to stiffen your legs up. And who knows? Again, like, the number one thing here is that the Knicks are keeping this very quiet. And also, if you followed basketball long enough, you know the teams will do this. They'll not fully disclose what an exact injury is if it's more severe than people think. And the knee is very strange. Sometimes you could twist your knee and it could feel awful and look like you really destroyed it and then it turns out it's fine and the swelling goes down a few days later and then sometimes you could walk off an injury the way that Porzingis walked off his torn ACL and then there was a video of him in the tunnel saying to fans who were filming him I'm fine I'm gonna be okay and then it comes out that he did in fact tear his ACL not too long after that which is pretty concerning because that means we saw RJ Barrett run off that injury but we don't know if that means that he's completely fine. And maybe it's just a light sprain. Maybe it actually is just a sore knee because he landed sort of awkwardly. But what we do know is that he was wearing a knee brace after that. And that's sort of concerning. Now, here's the thing. RJ played multiple games after opening day where he hurt his knee when Derek White was chasing him from behind. That means he didn't tear his ACL. No one plays on a torn ACL. You would know. You would just know, you would get it checked if it looked like there was a chance that you tore a ligament, whether it's your ACL, MCL, PCL, LCL, meniscus, anything in that knee, they are going to not play you because of how weird the knee is. It also means that he didn't dislocate his patella because you cannot run that injury off the way you can with a torn muscle. And I'm not saying that it's more severe than a torn muscle injury. I'm saying that it is a, that it is a different injury and it hurts more in the moment. I have um, dislocated my kneecap. It's a brutal feeling. We saw it happen with Quentin Grimes when he collided with PJ Tucker. He was in clearly brutal pain. And yeah, I, I saw the face that he made. I probably made a similar face. It is brutal. You're not going to run that off, which means RJ did not dislocate his kneecap either. Which means I don't think that RJ is seriously injured. But I would be shocked if this is not more than just a sore knee. I think he has a knee sprain or something like that if he was in a brace. And the reason because of that is that we have seen players wear boots for sprained ankles. We saw that with OB and Jalen Brunson last year in that team photo of a bunch of the players and their girlfriends and wives. Both Jalen Brunson and OB Toppin were in boots and they were like playing the next week. It's a precautionary thing. They're probably doing the same thing with RJ and his knee. He probably has a light knee sprain, and they just want to call it a sore knee, they being the Knicks, because it is the easiest way to not scare fans and cause a media frenzy for something that is nothing. But here is what Fred Cass had to say. He said that RJ is listed as questionable for tomorrow's game in Milwaukee. Obviously, this was tweeted out last night. And that the Knicks are still calling it a sore left knee. My concern is that Fred Katz is saying the Knicks are still calling it a sore left knee. When you are a beat writer for a team, you know the players, you know the coaches, you know the front office, and more than anything, you know the team and you know how it works. If Fred Katz is saying the Knicks are still calling it a sore knee, a man who knows more about the current Knicks than almost everyone 
because he has a personal relationship with them as their beat writer, that means that it's probably not a sore knee, or that Fred Katz at least knows something that the public does not. And that is what he is saying because he does not know what the injury is. He obviously is not hanging out with the medical staff or anything. He's interviewing players. He's interviewing coaches. But he's not going into the team doctor and being like, hey, so what happened with RJ's knee? Why is he in a brace? Why are you calling it a sore left knee? What's the deal here? So he's not going to know that. But if he's saying that the Knicks are still calling it a sore left knee, that's cause for concern. It's the same way that the Golden State Warriors were calling Kevin Durant's injury a calf injury and that the New York Jets were calling Aaron Rodgers' injury a calf injury and then the two of them blew out their Achilles in the exact same way. Obviously, those were years apart in different sports and one of them's basketball and the other's the New York Jets, which they do qualify as football because they have a winning record, you haters. Um, I'm a Jets fan. But absolutely, I think that RJ's injury is more severe. I also do not think that it is a season ender. I think this is something that might keep him out for a week or two. But fans do not want to see that. Fans are going to get upset if they hear that. So it is easier as of right now to keep calling it a sore left knee until you can get the exact proper diagnosis and know exactly how long he is going to be out for. Say RJ were to have torn his ACL or his MCL, or any of those ligaments, I already named them, I'm not going to do it again, we would know that he is more injured because he would not have played after that. No one tears their ACL in 2023 and then plays basketball the next day. You just don't do it because you would have had the MRI done the second the swelling went down enough for you to get the MRI done, which means if, if RJ had an MRI on his knee, it means that it came back pretty clean and that Maybe it's a knee sprain or something that they don't want to announce yet. I would be shocked if we got news saying that RJ Barrett's not playing for the rest of the year. So anyone who's feeling that way, rest assured, I doubt that is the case. But there are play there are people out there, analysts, who just do not believe this. Ian Bagley had to say this on RJ's knee. Basically, because I'm not going to read the whole thing, as I said, I don't want to sound like that kid in fifth grade who can hardly read one word a minute. But essentially... Begley cited that Barrett hurt his knee against Boston in the season opener, and it's a re reason for concern. He said that Barrett hurt his right knee on the play that he cited, and then Bagley corrected himself and said apologies for the error. It was his left knee, but his main point still stands. Barrett is an incredibly important piece to the puzzle for the Knicks, and so any injury to his knee is concerning. That absolutely is the point. That's the point. It doesn't matter what knee R.J. Barrett hurt. It matters that R.J. Barrett hurt his knee, and he's been the best player on the Knicks so far. I mean, these numbers don't lie. It's efficient, and look at this. 21 points, 3 rebounds, 2.5 assists, only 1 foul per game, which is just nice because he's playing elite defense. 45% from the field and 43% from 3. We have seen R.J. Barrett start cold before. R.J. Barrett is playing efficient, high-level basketball as a third option on a team that I have already talked about he should not be a third option on. R.J. should become the second scoring option. Randall should take a step back and be more of a point forward facilitator however i already talked about that a bunch and that is not what today's video is about today's video is about rj barrett and i'm just going to show you this one last quote by stefan bondi who said barrett tweaked his knee in the opener and has been managing it since as i said barrett got hurt he's been hurt he's been playing hurt i'll show you these numbers again because they're really nice and i like looking at them because they're so efficient Barrett has been putting up these numbers on an injured knee outside of the boston game where that injury took place i believe in the third quarter if i'm not mistaken so around all but one half of this season rj barrett has been playing on an injured knee and he's been the knicks best player it is incumbent that rj barrett is healthy this season julius randall has had one of the worst starts to an nba season that i've ever seen fans are getting real disrespectful to him which is not too surprising fans either love julius or hate julius jalen brunson has been sort of spotty he's had his moments for sure like that eight three-pointer game against the Hawks and he's also had some other good games he played well against Cleveland in Cleveland but then he's also been sort of inconsistent and the only other guy who's really been a consistency for the Knicks outside of Barrett is Mitchell Robinson who's having a tremendous season but Barrett and Robinson cannot be the only guys playing well and if RJ's not there then that leaves a scoring issue if Randall's not going to shoot well and then Jalen Brunson is going to be inconsistent. You need R.J. Barrett there. And that is when you turn Randall into that third option, that point forward role, where R.J. can score the ball more because he's been the only consistent scorer on the Knicks so far. And also, if R.J. is hurt, that means the Knicks need to get Quinton Grimes more involved. I don't know why, when Grimes is 
starting in a lineup that features Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, Josh Hart, and Mitchell Robinson, why he's taking the fourth most shots on, on the starting five. He should be shooting more than Josh Hart, and Josh Hart shot double the shots that Jalen Brun or that Quentin Grimes did. Randall shot way more than him, and Randall's not shooting well, and Grimes is not shooting the ball enough. So a bunch of things are thrown off without R.J. Barrett in the mix is essentially what I am trying to say. R.J. fits really well on this Knicks team all of a sudden, and he is the only one who has been playing consistent basketball in the 2023-2024 season, with the exception of Mitchell Robinson, who is a much different player than players like Barrett, like Randall, like Brunson. Mitch is not going to score you a bunch of points. He's going to get you a bunch of rebounds, mostly offensive rebounds, and just be a tremendous rim protector and defender in general. He might be the literally might be the front runner for defensive player of the year right now. The man's having an incredible season, and the Knicks cannot let it go to waste. But for them to not let it go to waste, it's going to take having R.J. Barrett. And I really think that the Knicks need to announce what this Barrett injury is regardless because you you need the players to know. If the players don't know what his injury is, that's going to be bad, and you need to be ready to adjust in case R.J. is going to miss some serious time. And if he's not going to miss some serious time, then the Knicks are in luck because they need that man on the floor if they want to be good. He was the second best player in playoffs, and he has been their best player so far this season. He has been their only consistent player, and he's actually been their best shooter, which is just insane. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'm filming this around 2 p.m. right now. I don't know if Barrett's playing tonight. Maybe he is, and this video is all for nothing, but we're posting it right away. And so if it comes out that Barrett's playing, that's perfect. If his knee is still a problem, then, then this video still applies. Obviously, if his knee is fine, then maybe this video does not apply as much. But this still is a cause for concern and shows that NBA teams will be sort of secretive with injuries and the Knicks will not be an exception to that. So make sure to keep that noted. But for that, for everything else, have a great day, guys. Watch the Knicks tonight. Maybe they'll beat the Bucs. We don't know. They can do it. The Raptors just did it and the Knicks are better than them. Shots at Raptors Digest. Sorry, Ben. But have a great day, guys. And remember, go Knicks.